I am extraordinarily pleased and grateful to, to learn that the AARP and the American Medical Association are both supporting the health insurance reform bill that will soon come up to a vote. So the doctors of America know what needs to be fixed about our health care system. These are men and women who know our health care system best. The doctors of America who know our health care system best. I want to welcome all the doctors who have joined us today at the White House, uh, who are representing, as we were talking about in the Oval Office, red states, blue states, high-cost states, low-cost states, rural uh, and urban states. Uh, I am thrilled to have all of you here today, and you look very spiffy in your coats. call it astroturf. It's not really a grassroots movement. It's astroturf. Add it all up, and the plan I'm proposing will cost around $900 billion over 10 years. This exchange will take effect in four years, which will give us time to do it right. We're going to work with your employer to lower the cost of your premiums by up to $2,500 a year. The only way they can get health insurance is to go out on the individual market and they're paying exorbitant amounts. Uh, maybe they work for a small business and uh, the small business can't afford right now to, uh, to provide health insurance. Small businesses are critical to our economy. They're a key engine of growth and job creation. No matter what you've heard, if you like your doctor or health care plan, you can keep it.
you can't just make up that language and decide that that's called a tax increase. Uh, look, we can have a legitimate debate about whether or not we're going to have an individual mandate or not. But, but you rejected it. I absolutely increase. reject that notion. That General Varelli, today you're arguing that the penalty is not a tax. Tomorrow you're going to be back and you'll be arguing that the penalty is a tax. That's because the nature of the inquiry that we will conduct tomorrow is different from the nature of the inquiry that we will conduct today. As one big group, these customers will have greater leverage to bargain with the insurance companies for better prices and quality coverage. This is how large companies and government employees get affordable insurance. It's how everyone in this Congress gets affordable insurance. And it's time to give every American the same opportunity that we give ourselves. Everybody will have lower rates, more, uh, better quality care, and better access. The irony is that uh, we've seen this model work really well in Massachusetts. The fact of the matter is we use the same advisors and they say it's the same plan. Well, the bill is crafted in such a way that um, those who are undocumented uh, 
will not have access to the tax credits or shopping in the marketplace. Uh, that has been limited, which is frankly why another very keen reason why we need comprehensive immigration reform. And, and I will make sure that no government bureaucrat or insurance company bureaucrat gets between you and the care that you need. We've got a great team in place. We are pushing very hard to make sure that we're hitting all the, uh, the deadlines and the benchmarks. I just uh, tell you, I just see a huge train wreck coming down. You and I have discussed this many times, and I don't see any results yet. You need, you need data. And I just, do you have any data? You've never given me any data. You just give me concepts, frankly. Well, Mr. Chairman, as we have discussed, there will be people on the ground starting this summer. How there many? Will be, um, I can't tell you at this the, point. At what point in the summer? Um, what, 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 ge geographically, what states? This is the kind of information I'm asking for. This exchange will take effect in four years, which will give us time to do it right. This threat is with us and at the moment is more imminent. One of the traditional methods of imposing statism or socialism on a people has been by way of medicine. It's very easy to disguise a medical program as a humanitarian project. Now the advocates of this bill, when you try to oppose it, challenge you on an emotional basis. They say, what would you do? Throw these poor old people out to die with no medical attention? That's ridiculous and of course no one has advocated it. Now in our country, under our free enterprise system, we have seen medicine reach the greatest heights that it has in any country in the world. The privacy, the care that is given to a person, the right to choose a doctor, the right to go from one doctor to the other, the relationship between patient and doctor in this country is something to be envied any place. In this country of ours took place the greatest revolution that has ever taken place in the world's history, the only true revolution. A little group of men, the founding fathers, for the first time, established the idea that you and I had within ourselves the God-given right and ability to determine our own destiny. What can we do about this? Well, you and I can do a great deal. We can write to our congressmen, to our senators. We can say right now that we want no further encroachment on these individual liberties and freedoms. And at the moment, the key issue is we do not want socialized medicine. 
you and I can do this, the only way we can do it, is by writing to our congressman, even if we believe that he's on our side to begin with, right to strengthen his hand, give him the ability to stand before his colleagues in Congress and say, I have heard from my constituents and this is what they want. If you don't, this program, I promise you, will pass just as surely as the sun will come up tomorrow. And behind it will come other federal programs that will invade every area of freedom as we have known it in this country. And if you don't do this, and if I don't do it, one of these days, you and I are going to spend our sunset years telling our children and our children's children what it once was like in America when men were free.